Hello, can you calculate 107 squared, which means 107 times 107 in your head? Keep watching to find out how. Here, we're going to learn a really neat math trick to calculate the square of numbers that are, that are near 100. So in other words, 107 squared, 105 squared, 110 squared, maybe on the other side of 100 like 96 squared, 92 squared. You're going to be able to do all of those things in your head here in the next few minutes. And one more thing I'll say for those of you who don't know, when we say we're squaring a number, that's just an algebra way of multiplying that number by itself. So 107 times 107, or 95 times 95, or 91 times 91. Those are what we call squaring numbers. Okay, let's go ahead and cut to the procedure here. What we need to notice first is that we're near 100. So for, for these problems, the base number, what I'm going to call the base number that we're near is 100. So that's going to be common to all of these problems here. So the first thing you want to mentally take note of, I'm writing it down so you know what I'm doing, but mentally you're going to be doing this. What you're going to notice is that the number 107 is 7 units over the base that we're talking about, which is 100. And that makes sense. I mean, we're seven units bigger than 100. That's all I'm saying here. I'm just writing it down. Now, the next, the actual math step we do is we take the number we have, 107, and we add to it however many units we are over the base, which we just said was seven. So all you have to do is take 107 plus seven, and that will equal 114. Now this is your first math result. You're going to keep this in your head uh, and we're going to use that to, to put together the final answer. Now what we do after we get this intermediate result is we take the last digit right here which is 7 and we go ahead and square it. Now remember squaring just means multiplying by itself so really what I'm asking you is what is 7 times 7? And all of you should know 7 times 7 is 49. So we're getting a two digit number here, 49. So first intermediate answer was 114, second answer is 49. The final answer to this problem is just putting them together, 11449. Put a comma there and you have 11,449. And I bet you none, none of us here in the beginning before we learn this um, would think that it would be possible, but it's a very simple procedure. We're seven units over the base of 100. We take 107 plus this last digit, getting 114. We square the last digit, getting 49. We put them together, 11,449. Okay, let's get some practice and go to our second problem. Now again, first thing we're going to notice is that we're five units over our base of 100, which for all of these problems, uh, we're, uh, you know, over the base of 100. So we're going to do 105 plus however many units we over we are over, which is 5. So we're going to do 105 plus 5. And all of you should know that that's 110. So we're going to keep that in our mind and move on to the next step. We take the last digit, which is 5, and we square it, which is 5 times 5. That's all we mean when we write 5 squared. We get 25. So the final answer is 11025, which is 11,025. All right, now just to get a little more practice, next number, 103. Let's go ahead and square it. What's 103 times 103? Uh, well, first thing we do is we notice we're three units over our base value of 100. All right, and so then all we do is we take 103 mentally and add to it 3 because we're three units over. 103 plus 3 is 106. We keep that in our head. That's very easy to do mentally. Next step is take that last digit and square it. 3 times 3 gives us 9. Now here's the only thing that gets a little bit different here when we're doing these problems. Uh, you see, here's a single digit. If I put them together, 106, 9, that's not going to be correct. It's not going to be enough digits. So really you need to write this as 0, 9. And all of these problems are going to be done this way. Um, you write it as a two-digit number. So when you put them together, you'll get 10609. 10,609. Now, if you get confused and wonder why that's the case, think of it this way. We're dealing with a base 100 here, sort of middle of the road, 100. The number 100 has sort of two digits after the main number here. And so when we're writing this last square of whatever this last digit is, 
uh, here, we always need to have two digits. In the previous problem, when we were doing 105 squared, we did 5 times 5 gave us 25. That was already two digits. The first problem, we did 107 squared. 7 times 7 is 49. That's already two digits. Here, uh, 3 squared is 9. We need to make sure it's two digits so that we'll get the answer of 10,609. All right, our next problem is going on the other side of 100. So here we're doing 98 squared. But exactly the same process is going to be uh, performed, but there's one thing that we just need to be careful about. Notice before when I was talking about the base 100 and how many units we were on top of 100, I was writing that out. And this is where it becomes into play, because when you go on the other side of 100, how many units away are we from 100? Well, really, when you think about it, we are sort of negative 2 uh, units uh, units from 100. So we're, we're sort of negative two units. The reason we're negative two is because we're two units, but we're on the other side of 100. So this negative here is going to become important because what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to add the, uh, the how many we are away from 100. So what we'll do is we'll take 98, but instead of doing what we did before, we'll just subtract two because this is the number of units we are away. So 98 minus two. All right, 98 minus 2 is going to give us 96. So that's our intermediate answer. The rest of the problem behaves exactly the same. Negative 2, if you square negative 2, because that's our how many we are away from 100, we're going to get 4. But again, exactly as in the last problem, we need to, to consider it and think of it as two digits, 0, 4, because our base is 100, and we have sort of two zeros here on the other side. So all of that is the same as before. Now we just put the two things together, 96, 0, 4, 9,604. So the process is the same when you're on the other side of 100. It's really no different. And I think that's what makes this, this um, procedure kind of easy and kind of neat. But you really need to be a little bit careful because you need to be working with the units you are away from the base of 100. If you look at this, and it's, it's tempting when you do a lot of the other problems to do 98 plus 8 because this is our second digit here. And that's sort of what we were doing when we were doing, you know, 108. 3 squared. Well, yeah, we're three units here above 100, so we add 103 plus 3. But here, we're, we're not eight units away from 100. We're actually negative two units from 100. So the way you do it when you're on the other side is you look at it and you say, okay, I'm two away from 100. So I'm going to take 98 minus 2 and get 96. I'm going to square, again, in the other problems, when it was like 103, we were squaring the 3 here, getting 9. But here, we're not squaring 8 to get 64. We're just looking at the difference here. So we're 2 away, negative 2 away. We square that, we get 4. 96, 0, 4, 9,604. All right, let's get a little more practice. Let's do 95 squared. The first thing we notice is that we're negative 5 units from... 100. So we're, we're 5 units away, but we're going down, so we're negative 5 units. So we're going to take 95 and subtract away the number of units that we are. So we'll take 95 minus 5, which everyone can do mentally in their head, and get 90. All right, 95 minus 5 gives us 90. Next, we look at the, the uh, difference, which is negative 5, and we square that difference. Negative 5 times negative 5 is going to give us 25. So we're always going to positive number 25, and the answer is just going to be 9025, 9,025. One more example with a problem less than 100 like this, 91 squared. Now we aren't actually uh, 9, negative 9 units from 100. So we're negative 9 units away from 100 because we're 9 units on the other side going down from 100. So the first thing we do is take 91 minus 9. Right? And we do that. What's 91 minus 9? That's going to give us 82. So we mentally hold 82. The next step is we look at how many units we are away, which is 9 units away, and we square that. 9 times 9, or negative 9 times negative 9, just gives us 81. So that's our second intermediate answer. And then we get 82, 81. Just put them together, 8,281. So the process behaves exactly the same way if you're on the other side of 100. But you do need to be careful in working with the number of units you are from 100. In this case, it was nine units away.
Okay, for our next problem, we're going to show you that this process works exactly the same way if you're dealing with numbers that are larger, you know, farther and farther away from 100. So here we notice that we're 12 units uh, from 100. So we're 12 units away. So the 12 here is what we're really going to be working with. So we take 112, which is our original problem, we add to it 12 because we're 12 units away. 112 plus 12 is 124, is 124. Now the next thing we do is we take the number of units we are away, like we have been always, and we square it. So 12 squared is 144. So we're doing exactly the same thing that we did before. Now you might think that you would write it down as 124144, but actually putting these two things together like this, when the numbers get larger, it yields a number that's too large. So that's not quite right. But it's pretty close. All you do, you take the first number, 1, 2, 4, and then when you write the second number sort of mentally in your head, you need to write it down or, or, or append it as 144, like this. You kind of overlap the first digit so that basically mentally what you're going to do is make it 1, 2, 5, 4, 4. So there's a little bit of extra mental juggling when you get larger, and so you get two three-digit numbers at the end. You need to kind of mentally overlap and add one together. But the answer is 12,544, and still, uh, compared to doing this the old way, 112 times 112, multiplying all of the digits, adding up all the digits, keeping it all, all squared away, that's basically going to be hopeless. But doing it this way and just having to overlap the digits like this and, and doing one little simple addition at the end, you can get good at that with practice. Okay, our final problem is going to be getting a little bit more practice with this. So here we are actually 10 units from 100, right? So we kind of mentally hang on to that. We're 10 units from 100. So what we're going to do is do 110 plus 10. 110 plus 10 because we're 10 units away, giving us 120. And then finally we take the 10 units that we are away and we square the 10. 10 times 10 is what we're asking ourselves here. We get 100. Now again, you don't write it down as 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0. That's going to be too many digits because you, we have sort of a three-digit answer here for our final deal. So mentally, we write 1, 2, 0 down, and then we kind of write the next batch of digits kind of like this. So we kind of overlap the first guy. So what we end up with is 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, which is 12,000. 100. And that's basically how you do this. It's a really useful thing. A lot of times you're squaring numbers and if you can get, if you end up having to square a number near 100, either on the plus side or on the minus side of 100, it's pretty simple. Basically you look at how far you are away from 100, add that to the base number, and then you square how far away you are and you basically append them together. And the only time you really have to think too hard is if, you, if you're getting farther and farther away, you might end up having to overlap these numbers. If you get farther and farther away, like 140, 34 squared, you could in theory do the, exactly the same thing that we're doing here, but it gets harder because then you start having to square 34 in your head. And um, that becomes difficult for a lot of people. But with practice, you can you can even end up doing that as well. Certainly the process is extremely value when the, valuable when the numbers are pretty close to 100. And most people can do this, no problem at all. Uh, in their head. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've learned something here. Practice, get a pencil out, uh, scribble down some problems, and with some practice you guys will get good at this. It's a really useful skill to speed up your practice uh, for these kinds of things on your exams. Learn anything at MathAndScience.com.